Perfect. Too. That lady? Yeah. No, it's, they were just shopping. Oh, wow. Yeah. It is a language. It is a language. What I love is is when instrumentalists, um, classical music people, you know the way you the way we remember themes that we played even if it was a long time ago and you know oh you played you know blah 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 and then you start singing the themes and stuff This is probably probably 16. Yes. Yeah. So there's going to be dialogue. That's why I have the faces. And I wanted to do this thing where I had, you know, kind of full body shot with their faces, right? Mm -hmm. So with the dialogue, though, I, I think I'm going to try this thing where my buddy gave me an old electric typewriter. And doesn't have any ribbon. But what I'm going to do... I was thinking about ordering some ribbon for it and then typing out the dialogue and then, you know, exacto knifing it and taping it on. Right. Right. And, um, or gl actually glue sticking it on. Right. I thought that would be a cool effect for large amounts of text. Mm -hmm. But what I'm thinking about doing instead of getting the ribbon is just take this pretty toothy paper and strike it and then paint where All it got indented. Yeah. yeah. So I think I'm gonna. Tr that way you can use different colors. You can get a little bit of a smudge. You can smear things. You can just do things to it. Oh, that's one thing to do too. Yeah. And where I was thinking about doing a, a kind of a technique where I, uh, I have different ideas. I'm gonna. I haven't. It's kind of. Uh, I haven't even taken it out yet, but um, cutting out and grinding up uh, chalk pastel mm -hmm. and brushing it in the indentations that way and then working it in with um, either a blending pencil or a, um, uh, a Q-tip, maybe a Q-tip, a little bit of um, baby oil. That's uh, one of the looks I like is chalk pastel with baby oil. Yeah. yeah. So I, that's a, so. Paper fit in the typewriter? Well. This is this is the whole thing. Is that's why there's the glue stick part of it. Is that I wouldn't do it on this page exactly. I would take another piece of Bristol. I have a, a pad of small Bristol pages, or just another piece of Bristol, cut up and then put it in, and then I'll still tape it on there. Once I've done that work, then cut it out and then glue stick it on there. So it has that kind of like you know punk rock band poster yeah, look. Yeah. 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 Retro yeah. So, I, but I actually, yeah. even though I have an during idea, the, during the horn playing, you can hear a typewriter in the background. Ah uh, ha ha. Well, I, that's another th thing is that, you know, part of the just the home studio thing is recording my own. Part of this project in general is recording my own soundstage stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Stuff. I've got some cool train from right. the backyard. Yeah. I'm you know. Excited. Yeah. So, so I haven't actually. I'm not entirely sure what this conversation is. I have an idea what it's about. Like I haven't, but I haven't actually um, composed the conversation. Right. But um, the way I'm looking at it, I think it's going to play. So it's this. You know, we read like these two guys are walking. You see them, and it'd be like you know X Y Z X Y Z X Y Z X Y Z. You know.
Yeah. You may actually start with the bend and work your way backwards or jump around, which you're doing obviously there. You're on page 16, but you're actually on 13. And then you have your next, you thought through a lot of it, and then you fill in the gaps in between. The backfill part, yeah. Back yeah, you know, I there's a game that I don't know how to play, right? Yeah. I, or at least it confuses me, but Sudoku, right? Do you do Sudoku? No. Anybody who does Sudoku says that they go about it that way, that they're, they start from different angles, they go this way, they go that way. Like, you very rarely do a Sudoku puzzle in any kind of linear order. You're always coming at it, you're always coming at it different ways. And I always thought that was cool, even though you put, I just... If for whatever reason it doesn't interest me enough to get into it, um, it may be valuable to, to get into it. But that idea of, of um, coming at it from different angles, you know? Right. Then all of a sudden it just starts to meld all together. Well, what is kind of fun about this story for me is I have written a lot in, this, in the world but the, the the guy Glenn, um, Glenn Mossfoot, who was like the first guy, and if I play him in a game, um, so I get a chance to explore him as a character in a completely different thing, and maybe, you know, maybe Glenn, after his exploits in this game, retreats to this world. Um, or it's just like like you do with the superhero universe they have just different versions of their story you know not to say that Glimpse a superhero but <laughs> thank you Leslie for watching our Thank you, Leslie. Do we know? Do I know Leslie? Uh, no, no, maybe. Is she a featured artist here? Nope. No. No. Alright. I do like this 5 for point five millimeter round. Um, even though it's a point three, I do like the point five. It's a good addition to the arsenal. That you purchased here at Suave. That's why I fair with my artist discount. <laughs> so I think I bought maybe Lily's dog food. Hey. Well, I don't know if she's a lot. Does she? Only the best. Yeah. That should be spoiled.
Yeah, even if Phil lets me just bill my regular time to do the photo collage, would be worth it to me. And I have a feeling that it might be a retro thing or a retro decision, but I have a feeling I can work it into conversation, you know, if he's having me still do stuff. Which, when I had gotten sick and, and all this stuff, I said I didn't want to do that anymore because of the driving and whatnot. But it really, it's, now I'm getting used to the treatment. Um, you know, treatment, it's, it's, it's disabling. You know, I really can't do shift work. Like, I'm not really competitive. I'm not competitive in the full-time marketplace. But I can still do stuff for the solar company. Um, it's not that stressful. I was kind of making it more stressful than it should be. Um, by thinking certain things should be a certain way that it makes no like it makes no sense to hire somebody to come do a task and give them this complex protocol when if you took the time to make a complex protocol you wouldn't need them to come in and do the task right I mean and just things about and as I see the way the business unfolds and the way timetables change and stuff getting uptight about things not going a certain way is just asking to be unhappy right yeah so, um, yeah. Hi, Barbara. Do I know you? Yeah. I do? Oh, oh, so you're me now. Yeah. Am I you but now? She knows, but she knows you though. Oh, okay. Hello.
yeah, sorry about that. Hey, Barb. Yeah, the crap in the land. Yeah, I know, Barb. I actually came up with a lot of this stuff while working at Capital Land. While sitting in the cab. Yeah. Yeah, and reading and just, you know, looking around and I would take some notes sometimes or just keep it in my head and then write it down when I got home. Or I did a lot of the um, the book writing for this while working there. So this has been a work in progress for a while. Yeah, quite a while. Yeah. Like, yeah. Really I mean, obviously yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of a light's work kind of thing, you know, magnum opus. Yeah. 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 Yeah, or not doing it at all, or. Worrying about what people say, or I don't know, just You know, I like the idea of like pastel chalk dust and like driving it in with Q-tip. That way you have the other color also. Like it has this almost cloudy effect to it. Around. That could be pretty cool. Yeah. Is it more like subtle thought? More of a dialogue? Yeah, I'm going to, I haven't, like I said, the, my buddy of mine, um, we got talking about it and he, He's like a typewriter enthusiast, and um, I guess he writes on a um, on a typewriter and it has piles of paper, yeah. and uh, he just likes that feel. And uh, he said they had this electric typewriter that you know. But it's kind of interesting. The technology is such where people's junk is like really useful. Like, well, that camera is not junk by any means, right. but you know, I got a pretty freaking sick camera that some dude was like. I got a better one. <laughs> Here.
Right. Would you load yourself up with two cameras and walk around that way? Yeah, that would be. To, you'd just be, and then you go. And I can just see like this time next year. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I got. <laughs> oh, there's Bob. He's bristling with gear. <laughs> Right, right, and then and then you have to you need like you know, a, you're laughing, at this, but I, I've already thought you've already I, yeah no it's you've got some kind of rigging where you have I don't know two poles with wires and squeezy things and you can change direction with them and Yeah, yeah. This is clearly a two three thousand dollar machine back in the day. That is extremely poor quality. But at the time, it was cutting edge. But I picture myself walking around with that thing too. Well, one thing I'm I'm learning as I'm, you know, dipping my tipping my toes in photography is um <clears throat> You know how much goes into the physical grinding of the glass and the bezels and all that stuff, and then how much is really compensated for in today's environment with AI. So a life before, even just even even the the sort of lower end of AI, where like you know making decisions on shutter speed by the amount of light available and just all the sort of auto stuff that goes into taking into currently taking pictures, you know, and all the stuff that your kind of your phone does for you and stuff where. Like I, at that time, you know the who knows what like the level. This probably wasn't a matter of like the quality of the glass or the quality of the motors, but there was no AI as kind of part of the experience, right? On that, you didn't have a computer on an old school camcorder, like, or you you know you didn't have image stabilization because it wasn't possible. You know the 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 software and didn't exist yet, or n at least it didn't exist. Um, on a consumer level, it may have existed in like military applications. Right. Right, she just wanted the, the content. Right. Interesting.
Right. Right, in the 80s, did even the fastest consumer computers, can they even really do streaming video? This is from 2000. Really? Interesting. On Betamax, huh? Not Betamax. No, this is the DVD. This is oh, the gotcha. Video. Okay. This is a really tiny cassette. She thought it was an audio cassette. Gotcha. So tiny, it looks like a cassette tape. But it's a digital tape, though? It's a digital tape. Yes. Gotcha. Gift card void if 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 uh, whatever marred. <laughs> so, so I'm going. So what I did is I retired that, but I took the footage that was on this thing and put it on this SD card. Uh, all the files, whatever was on there, never looking at them. And so last week, of course, now I discovered these solid state drives that I used to use for storage, which since then I have transferred to. I looked through all those files and started watching these things that this little guy did because I'm like, I don't recognize the file number because it reminded me of any camera. And then that's when I discovered that's that little thing. And I still got that little thing somewhere. But it's funny because looking at some of them, apparently picking it up and setting it down on the table, the thing's recording. Just a recording of just random things that I'm doing while I'm sitting there at the paint table. While very short clips, maybe 10 seconds or 15 seconds, or maybe a minute. Um, like I said, it was, it, what was annoying about it is there's no indication on there that it is on, off, or whatever. It's just a bare bones little recording device. Okay. You press record, you press stop. Kind of neat to just see the cat wandering around on my table when I'm not there. 
I just think it's pretty wild how intoxicating content is, you know, even, <clears throat> you know, even beyond like scripted television shows or the news propaganda machine or anything like that, just how intoxicating, um, you know, a, a cat walking over a paint table when no one's there or just, I mean... I've been getting going down these TikTok rabbit holes where I'll lie there for hours just flipping through these videos over and over and over and over again. It's just about everything from the kitty cats to whatever snippets of rapper interviews to who the heck knows what comes up, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not, it's, it's not sensible. It didn't have sense where it's, it's someone's experience put on there, it's 10 seconds, so if there's something going on that is controversial that's outside your window, you grab it and you share it at that moment. And if it happens once and it happens 100 times, with all different types of people, you get the real time, real footage of what is happening. I like that. I know what you mean, just a just Afghan special. national, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think maybe have to factor in if somebody had like you know lived through the bombings and whatnot that, um, you know, what kind of damage done to their overall ability to make decisions and and sure. yeah, you know, uh, just thinking. I mean, one giant shell shock, you know. Almost, almost. <laughs>
He was in Venice, Italy. And uh, we stopped at a cafe to do some coffee and stuff. We had to really give it some thought. He's Hmm, how are we doing on time here, folks? Uh, we're at almost 2 30. The video length of this one is. Uh, 40 minutes. Right. Winding down, yeah? Um, I think we're going to, uh. This page up in a minute and do some inking on the page before it. Part of why I'm leaving a lot of the, well, besides I want to do this thing of, of backfilling, um, is I'm leaving a lot of backgrounds open right now because I, I, I want to get more detailed in, like, you know, drawing foliage and woods and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I've just been trying to spend more time in the woods, um, which I haven't done since I was really a kid. Of even going on, even like going on nature trails and stuff like that, you know. Um, I'm <clears throat> kind of making it into, uh, I don't know, just a little bit of a hobby or obsession, you know. Doing some, a little bit, a little bit of hiking and photographing, and yeah. you know, who knows, maybe I can work up to some substantial hikes. Um, but and I don't know. I don't know, I, just, I think there was going to be a little bit of a change of look for this episode. I think maybe the, the idea can be with each episode has a little bit different uh, sort of feel to it. I don't know. Yeah. That's one of the cool things I like about the instant gratification as far as going through the snapshots. Yeah. Right. Well, one thing I'm finding interesting about um, <clears throat> having a, digi a, a quality digital camera is messing with the ISO because it is risk-free. I mean, I was told that, you know, as a beginner, you should, you know, have the ISO be auto and the machine will, the, you know, the AI, I'm using the term loosely, will determine the correct ISO depending upon your light and all this other stuff. But I'm like, it's free. So if I want to do a high expo, you know, a high ISO, yeah, you can just so you rip out, you make it, you make it go a number, and you rip out a bunch of pictures, and then you go look at the pictures and you see if that number was what you wanted, you know. Lucas, yeah, what's going on, bud? Oh, he's down there now. Oh, now he's down here. Yeah. Oh, he's done with the bathroom. How are we doing? Just while I'm waiting. <laughs> she was everywhere, so I might as well get it. Yeah? Yeah. Was it? It's a decent shape. Yeah, it is. She's got a green and green here. Right now she's up to. I was supposed to see. So she's up to G now.
This is probably 15. 15? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I never, except for I think once at like a winter camp, um, we did some like photography and then developed our pictures, but I've never did anything in a dark room. Like <clears throat> when I was a kid, I wasn't really into photography. Um, there were kids that were, and the school I think had a dark room in one of the art rooms. But the way the school kind of worked out, you were, and by the time of high school, you were either kind of doing the art stuff or you were doing band because they, they kind of conflicted with each other schedule-wise, the art classes with the uh, 
the band practices. Yeah. So you're kind of doing one or the other. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm kind of like some hipsters. <laughs> Is he holding like a, what is that, like a beaker or something? Or? Yeah, it's like a beaker. You know, <laughs> they're enjoying an afternoon tube beverage. Or something. They're enjoying an afternoon beverage, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the 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 uh, it's more representational. Even though I guess you could, I mean you could play it. And there's <laughs> a, I have been playing. It. I play. It's about a chimbasso, which is a kind of a tuba. But um, I've been doing little YouTube videos of the pages, and I've been playing the uh, a background on horn or oh, a multi-tracked yeah. horn, like a couple different horn lines. That's cool. Um, so yeah, it is kind of compositional, but it's also like representational, you know. Yeah. And then I just, I, where I'm at now is yeah. kind of backfilling to what's down a few pages is the yeah. the next episode. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. I have Enchanted Kambasa. There it yeah. is. <laughs> yep. So exciting here once. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Humans, are, awesome. humans are a rarity in this world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yes, really awesome, though. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Here, if you want some info, I have a Redbubble page too, which is like a site with uh, you can get different artwork on, you know, coffee cups and whatnot. Oh, cool! Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank, thank you very you so much. much. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of goes along with dialysis treatment. Yeah, tomorrow was supposed to be an informational seminar about transplants, but uh, it got canceled because of COVID. So there's one in March. It'll be interesting though. You go into the hospital one day and they cut you open and knock you out. Well, not in that order. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> hey, I'm still here. Yeah. You wake up with someone else's kidney inside you. I don't care. I'll take a pig kidney. I'll take whatever. Yeah, I think I've said this before. I have no reservations about things like artificial body parts yeah. none whatsoever I 
do wonder what a brain transplant would be like. <laughs> well, would you be your brain, or would you be the body that got the brain transplant? What would you be? Yeah. So it wouldn't really be a brain transplant, it'd be a body transplant. Yeah, it's pretty much for the brain. Yeah. I think it's I think a lot of it's probably memory capacity is so huge with others. Our our brain is constantly Yeah. Getting kind of deep here at the drawing demo. I know. Here at Suave. There is a neat uh, side by story that I wish I remember the name of the writer. But basically, the closing question is if you were to have all your senses covered by a robot that travels. Hmm. You have no other way of, you know, you're seeing, feeling, smelling what is going on there. Like, where are you? Where are you? Well, my, my doctor, we were talking, you know, I see him all the time, like once a week now, you know, at, this gen at the treatment center. And he calls it an artificial dichotomy between mind and body. That we make this, we... We talk in terms of this distinction, and we create this barrier between the two. Now I'm paraphrasing him. This isn't what he said, beyond right. calling it an artificial dichotomy. But um, in, the, in the context we were talking about, is, it was kidney disease and how years of bad kidneys you know, create, leave toxins in your brain, just like it leaves toxins everywhere else. And um, how I'm feeling with the treatment, a slowly... Um, a little more more clarity, more better decision making, less anxiety, not completely no anxiety, but you know um, kind of tracing back um, but it I think he I think he's besides you know being a doctor and being pretty smart and being older and, and seeing more of these things go by, I think he's pretty right on that it is an artificial dichotomy that your brain is an organ like your liver like your kidneys right. and it's complicated and, and things get wonky cognitively when you start messing around with like saying things like brain transplants. Sure. But it is, um, there isn't a, dis there isn't, in reality, there isn't a grand distinction between your mind and your body. Right. That they're, yeah, they're all yeah. I was going to say that earlier when you talked about how your feelings toward your art were Yeah.
Well, I mean, that does lend itself to um, simulation theory. I mean, <clears throat> that's got some traction. I mean, some pretty smart people think we live in a simulation, you know, and that there are things that point towards it. I would, without without batting an eyelash, I would go, I would, the whole um, idea of like Elon Musk's Neuralink where, you know, ultimately you can download, you'd be able to download your consciousness into a simulation that would be, you know, as eternal, you could you know, live beyond your death of your biological body or you could even go in and out of a digital world and a biological world. I used to think that wasn't, you know, that was all horrible. <clears throat> Where do I sign? Where do I sign? You're gonna cut me open and put some chip in my brain? All right, that's cool. You know, <laughs> I, I do. I'm I'm all I'm on board. I am on board. Um, because frankly, you know, enduring you know, regularly medical stuff, right? Treatment and you know, I got a procedure coming up in a couple of weeks and all this other stuff. Like getting in the gown and getting into a sterile a sterile clinical environment isn't really a hassle to me anymore. I don't think it's unnatural. I don't think anything's unnatural. If it exists, it's natural. It's right. it's happening. You know, there was never this great, you know, Elysium field existence where everybody had only five percent body fat and was super muscly and sexy right. and you yeah. know, that just that's not the human experience. No, it's not. So if if you wanna clearly No, I don't wanna be I don't wanna be a guinea pig on, on these trials. You know, I'm not that desperate for it. Um, yeah, that's, my, that's one of my nightmares about the situation is, is you get in there and you've got a glitch. And you're stuck there forever. Mm, 
you learn to adapt. See, to me, the glitch that would really that would terrify me would be like a lack of cognitive ability, essentially in an intellectual deficit, you know, um, or an inability to, you know, right, right. Well, some people got uploaded in this existence, and they don't want to grow. They got <laughs> uploaded into a fetus, and then they grew biologically, and they have this. It's like the deficit is the 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 disability is lack of a desire or a lack of grit, you know. And I think I know the sort of psychological community is starting to pin that down, but I think um, la lack of of grit or tenacity is itself a disability. And I wonder if it can be treated, and if you can do things for people to make, make the, to have them, you know, have more grit. Right. But. Uh, I read a couple pages the other night. Um, I haven't been drawn into an actual book in a long time. Um, maybe it's all the digital media. Maybe it's all the YouTube. Um, I like the perspective, though. I like... Uh, um, you know... Yeah. There's one story, short story that he did, and I think it takes place on Titan. There's these entity beings that exist in the ice that when the sun comes around, it comes alive in a sense that it becomes conscious. Okay. Right. And you're just so enwrapped in thinking in human terms, like how is, you know, why wouldn't it be possible? Why couldn't something just exist because? Thank you. What if, what if like bees, for instance, yeah. some maybe some. What if in their hive mind was way more complex than we give them credit for, and they actually have like novels and literature, and oh. but it's it's in a different medium, and and they what if they fly around and they're like, imagine if those big apes with only two eyes <laughs> and just a big dumb mouth, what if they were, and they do all these weird things. What if they actually were feeling compassionate beings? Like, what if they ponder? They, you know, I mean, we know they don't, they don't have a compound eye, so they don't really see well, yeah. and yeah. <laughs> they can't fly, yeah. so they're pretty restricted to the ground. But they build these machines that allow them to fly. And what if the bees, when they're when yeah, they're, like, they're yeah. thinking like, yeah. you know, what's what? Imagine a world when you only had two legs and you only had, uh, <laughs> you know, monocular two two binary eyes and not. Uh, yeah. 
and you only heard imagine if you could only hear it to 15,000 hertz as opposed to you know bees and stuff that live in this sort of 80,000 hertz right right imagine you could only you could not see what the equivalent of infrared yeah yeah And we think our minds and our perception, the way we cobble together the universe with our senses, is somehow the only, the only that the all supreme being that created it all made it just for us. Sky Daddy. Been getting into anime lately. Yeah. 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 I like anime too. I don't. It's hard for me because it's too. A lot of it is too childish. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've been I've been binging out on Cowboy Bebop. I like. Uh, what's the What's the main one that came out in the nineties? Again. Akira. Ninja Scroll? No. no. It's basically again where the soul resides. Oh, interesting. Um, oh, Ghost in the Shell. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then there was a live action movie with Scarlett Johansson. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Ghost in the Shell was pretty great, though. Was there were three original, Ghosts in the Shells. Yeah. yeah. The original, the first one, the music score, everything was beautiful about it. Do I know Mandy?
So you mean like there would be a bot on Mars and you could somehow plug into its feed? Well, the, the the problem would be initially from a sci-fi standpoint or a science standpoint would be latency, because yeah. you know if it takes, say say it takes at the speed of light, you know, seven minutes to get from to Mars, which it probably maybe takes. Well, it's, I know it's eight minutes to the sun. Right. Then you could like how you would overcome that much latency. Right. Eight yeah, is is in is a chasm. Yeah. You know, I mean even. You know, people talk about like latency, <clears throat> like on the internet around the world, to say however many point zero zero. It's usually like a few decimal places, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it's traveling way further than just from me to you. It's traveling to that server, and then, and that's not fiber. That's not. It may be fiber optic in nature, but there's a lot of aspects of that process that are not the speed of light. Right. It would let you travel ahead of time. Yes, yes. That would be how you do start. That would be the initial innovation for time travel was right. how to figure out to travel ahead enough in time so there wouldn't be any latency for the robot proxy on a different planet. <laughs> Hello, everybody. <laughs> again, again. Did you get that, Elon? Oh, I thought about that last week. Yeah, Elon Musk would be like, "Um, oh, actually, yeah, I've got some specs for that." No, no, eight minutes. Yeah, I mean, imagine a latency. That would be, how could you be... How it, could you function? Yeah, if you're eight minutes behind. Yeah. At the same time, though, but if you are... goes back to the question is, but where are you? But if you're feeling like you are there, when you would be acting at that moment there... Well, there would have to be a separate AI that is dealing with the environment, or you'd have to put it in an environment where there would be no hazards. Right, so there have to be some kind of AI operating the robot as it tr deals with because you couldn't deal with hazards eight minutes behind. You'd fall down a, you know, you'd have fallen down a cliff and smashed into a ravine before you even knew it. Right. Yeah. The feed, w yeah, you've already destroyed yourself, and the feed would stop, but it what made it stop happened a while ago. Right. Yeah. All right, we'll have to get back to the drawing board on yeah, that back one. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> I still like it. I still like it. I, I, I'll try to deal with the eight minutes. I'll just have to be very good at predicting the future. <laughs> or, or you'd have to uh, have some kind of like faster than light. Say maybe that would be the first step in creating like solar system jump gates. Where you'd need to have, um, you know, some kind of quantum thing that makes the signal get back to Earth faster than light. Because, right. like in Cowboy Bebop, which takes place in the 2070s, you know, pretty much the solar system is colonized, you know, um, and Earth is like kind of destroyed. So it's like a big orbital city around Earth, and then there's colonies on Mars, colonies on um, Venus, and then. A whole even world a whole a whole like civilization around Jupiter on the moons of Jupiter where Jupiter is the center of all of it right. you know the sun. like Ganymede is a, is a big world and Europa is a big world on the cowboy bebop scene cowboy bebop yeah it's cool figure. and there's really cool music it's got this really groovy Groovy, groovy jazz stuff going. All right, we're like 20 seconds here. 20 seconds. Watch so Cowboy Bebop. Until two weeks from now. Yes. Oh, we should probably two pick weeks? that date. Yeah, yeah, we'll do two weeks. Okay. 
All right.